Well, we just finished up a wild one in wine country. What an insane race. A lot of wreckage, a lot of carnage. A fairly clean second half of the race, full of strategy, won by none other than Kyle Larson. Let's talk about it. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle aka Racing Boy Short and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news and everything NASCAR. If you haven't already, I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week. Also, give me your thoughts on this video. What did you think about the race at Sonoma? Plus, give me any improvements I can make on the channel. So let's get to it. Sonoma Raceway, Sears Point. We had what I'd say an entertaining race. Not sure if it was necessarily a great race, but it was definitely, definitely entertaining. And it started off pretty interesting as we had Denny Hamlin actually blow his motor. I don't I don't know exactly what happened. It seemed like Hamlin was pretty confused on what happened as well. His car went up into a ball of smoke on lap number two, I think. Real unfortunate to see him go out so early on in the event. He was not long followed by his young teammate of Ty Gibbs, who also went out of the event pretty early from hitting the wall. I'm, I'm still not exactly sure what happened there. It looked like he had lost a tire. I'm not sure exactly how he lost the tire. And then after passing the start-finish line going into turn one, he hit the, he hit the wall there. His car was done from that point forward. The whole first two stages of this event were just plagued with caution after caution. It just seemed like they couldn't go like two or three laps without having a caution in this event. At the beginning portion, it was just really difficult for these drivers to race on this brand new surface. Because like I mentioned in my preview video, they're on a brand new surface this weekend at Sonoma Raceway. And it seemed like a lot of drivers just didn't know how to handle it. The racing was just really close. And I think near the end of stage two, when we saw even more incidents and harder and bigger incidents, I think at that point, a lot of drivers were just really upset and really frustrated with how the racing was going, whether they got hit or not, or they were just frustrated by all the pacing and all the caution laps. And I think that's that's just what happened at the end of stage two. And they were able to all clean it up in stage three after they were able to run four or five laps. You began to see a couple of drivers get gaps throughout the field and you saw some actual racing and you began to see some strategy actually come into play. One thing I did want to mention before we move on to the final stage of this event when strategy began to really come into play. One driver that dominated the early portion of this event was Joey Logano. He was leading a lot of laps at the very beginning of the race. Ended up making a strategy call near the beginning portion of the race, which put him back near the back of the field on a restart. And he got caught up in one of those incidents. And his day was pretty much done from that point forward. He wasn't competing for the win after that. And coming into the last stage, you had a couple of different strategies going into play it was honestly a little bit confusing just with how much was going on so many different strategies different takes different ways of racing on the track it was the whole leaderboard was just discombobulated it was very interesting and entertaining to watch and it, it was very entertaining to watch Kyle Larson Kyle Larson I'm not sure if he had a better car than Tyler Reddick I think Tyler Reddick might have had a better car I'm not exactly sure but Larson and Reddick looked like they made slight contact a little bit earlier on in the race when Reddick was trying to make a pass it looked like Larson tried to force Reddick to take a higher line into the corner and they made very slight contact and then Reddick I think he flat spotted his tires and just couldn't make up that track position during that run and at that point he was just facing an uphill battle and was just never able to get back up to the front and compete for the win which really left the door open for Kyle Larson or for one of these drivers with these various strategies to win the race, most notably Chris Buescher and Martin Truex Jr. Chris Buescher and Martin Truex Jr., two drivers that have been very close to winning races 
already this season have been very competitive. Truex has been extremely consistent, while Busher has had some heartbreak when it comes to winning these races. Of course, you have Kansas and you have Darlington, two races where he came this close to winning. If one thing or two things went a little different, he could have won both of those events. So the way that Chris Buescher and Martin Truex Jr. strategy went, and there was a lot of drivers actually on this strategy, once you got towards the end of the race, you had that last restart, you had drivers like Kyle Larson and Tyler Reddick and these other drivers making a pit stop, going towards the back of the pack, having fresher tires, while Truex, Buescher, amongst other drivers like Kyle Busch, stayed up towards the front of the field on the older tires, and both of them had to pit one more time. It just the question was, when were these drivers going to pit? Well, at the round 40 laps to go, you had these drivers begin to come down pit lane, like Martin Truex Jr., Chris Buescher, Kyle Busch. All these drivers were beginning to make their final pit stops of the day, while a driver like Kyle Larson, I think, Chase Elliott was one of the close one of the drivers that was further up in the field on this strategy at the time. Decided to stay out and a couple extra laps. I think Larson ended up staying out 13 extra laps on track on these older tires. So while he did that, he was actually losing a little bit of time, not as much as you would think. He was losing some time to drivers like Chris Busher, like Martin Truex Jr. Eventually Cliff Daniels, Kyle Larson's crew chief brought him down pit road and when he came back onto the track he was around eight eight and a half seconds behind the race leaders with a little over 20 laps to go and larson was just chipping away at that lead lap after lap after lap just chipping away at it and while that was going on you had chris busher actually begin to fall off chris busher really fell off at the end of this run i don't know if he pushed it way too hard at the very beginning on those tires or if he flat spotted them at one point or, or another but Truex was driving him down catching him up pretty quickly Truex was just unable to find the passing lane he just was unable to time his runs properly to make a pass on Chris Busher, which was opening up the door for Larson to catch up even quicker on these two race car drivers eventually with only a couple of laps to go these three drivers were within close distance. You could throw a blanket over these three drivers in these last couple of laps. And it looked like Busher overdrove, looked like to be turn 10, which opened up the door for Martin Truex Jr. to slip to the inside, going through the hairpin. Truex was able to complete the pass, and it looked like he could potentially get away from Chris Busher and Kyle Larson at this point. But Larson was able to also sneak past Busher, which opened up the door where there's no one in between the race leader and Larson at this point. Now the race leader being Martin Truex. And I guess these drivers were just feeling the pressure as you had Busher make his mistake. And then around a half a lap later, you also had Martin Truex Jr. make a mistake going into, I think that's turn seven, all the way down to make that right hand corner right before they go into that that wall that jumps out. I'm always I'm always thinking someone's going to hit that wall. Well, guess what? Larson actually did hit that wall in qualifying and that turn ended up being the winning move for him as he was able to get under Truex going into the next turn right before they got into the S's, completed the pass and at that point forward did not look back. Kyle Larson ended up driving away to winning his third event of the Cup Series season. You did it, sir. I did it. He did it. I did it. He did it. You did it, sir. I did it. He did it. And after everything that's gone on the last couple of weeks with the Indianapolis 500, all the double stuff, the waiver, all the stuff that's been going on with Kyle Larson, this got to be a good shot in the arm. This got to feel good for Larson to get this victory. We got to talk a little bit about that last lap. I saw with a couple of laps remaining that Ross Chastain and Kyle Busch were beginning to battle it out. And I'm going to show you this clip right here. And on the final lap, it looks like Ross Chastain just flat out cleans out Kyle Busch, just flies it into the corner. It looks like he might have slid a little bit and slid up the track. And then at that point, he it was either... It was either him or Kyle, so he ended up. He it looked like he ended up just 
pressing the gas at that point and pushing through Kyle Busch and making the pass. Kyle Busch later on in the final lap would actually run out of gas along with Martin Truex Jr. Martin Truex Jr. was running in second place. That's two straight weeks where we've had drivers run out of gas on the final lap. I think it's pretty it's pretty wild that we've had it happen for two straight weeks. We used to have fuel mileage races all the time. And I think now just because of all the technology and all the information that we get, it just doesn't happen as often. We have technology. That was cool to see some fuel strategy come into the mix near the end of that race. But how about Kyle Larson? Kyle Larson put on a show all race long. Like I said, I'm not 100% sure he was faster than Reddick. If I had to say one or the other, I'd probably give the edge to Larson because Larson was a lot faster through traffic. But when Reddick was in clean air, he was just unstoppable today. He just looked unbeatable today when he was in clean air. And he was faster trying to make that pass on Larson, was just unable to complete the pass. And he was just never able to compete for the win that point forward. I don't know if. I don't think he messed up the car at all. I think that just messed with his track position. And during that run, he flat spotted his tires. So it was a lot more difficult for him to complete passes. But nonetheless, Tyler Reddick was really fast today. But Kyle Larson could potentially have been just that much quicker, but was flying through traffic and got another victory on the season. That makes it three for Kyle Larson. And he's obviously one of the prime championship contenders this season looking for his second title. Today's race also was the last race for the season on NASCAR on Fox. Whew, thank you. Thank you. Because, oh my gosh, they were so bad today. Once again, they were messing up camera shots during the event. I think they went to caution, not to caution. They went to commercial with eight laps to go. I, I remember saying early on in the event, oh, with all these caution flags, they're just, because they, they were using up so many commercials in that first like hour, hour and a half because of all the caution flags. It was constantly commercial, commercial, commercial. So I was thinking that NASCAR might have used up a good amount of their commercials. That way they don't need to play much commercials at the end of the race. This really opens it up for the end of the race to go without any commercials. And then with eight, I think it was eight, like I said, I think it was eight with eight laps to go. They're like, all right. Now that Larson took the lead, because Larson just took the lead not even 30 seconds before they went to commercial. They're like, oh, now that now that Larson took the lead, we're going to send you to a side-by-side -side and then bring you back to the for the finish of, this, of the race. And I was like, really? We're doing this again? One thing I want to mention before I get to my final thoughts, I am a little bit disappointed when it comes to the Aussies, the supercar drivers of Cam Waters and Will Brown. Will, Will Brown shown amazing speed all weekend, even showed pretty good speed today, was making a lot of passes, looked like he had some sort of electrical issue, was able to get it fixed and continue on. He ended up finishing a couple of laps down. Cam Waters ended up leaving the event early. They didn't even say on Fox what happened. I guess I would have to look up what happened. But even before then, he was running outside the top 30. A good amount of the day was overall just... Really struggling. I don't know if it was necessarily the racetrack or from or if it was more the car. But Cam Waters struggled pretty pretty hard today in the number sixty for RFK Racing. I really hope to see them both back and making making a return to the Cup Series very soon. Maybe at Watkins Glen or the Roval. Maybe even doing an oval race. That would be pretty cool. I really like seeing these supercars drivers come over here and race. I would really love to see a nascar driver race the baja 1000 i think that'd be really cool i enjoy supercars racing other than nascar supercars is my favorite form of motorsport and i really like to see these drivers come over here and have success and hope i hope they continue to come over here and and put on great performances and shane continues doing what doing what he does he just got two in a row and xfinity and overall, I really like the effort and the passion from these guys, and I hope to see them back out on the racetrack very soon. All right, let me get into my final thoughts on the event. Overall, I enjoyed the race. I thought it was very entertaining. Like I said at the beginning, I thought it was very entertaining. I don't know if it was necessarily the best race. I really liked that strategy came into play, but that 
that first half of the race, those first two stages were just unbearable, just wreck after wreck after wreck, especially compared to the Xfinity Series race. There was some mayhem, but if you ignore that huge accident they had when they went up to the top of the hill, if you ignore that one incident, that race overall seemed a lot cleaner than this event that we got today for the Cup Series. But luckily, they really cleaned it up in that third stage. Some great racing, some great strategy in play for that last stage. I really wish that Truex and Busher, I, I just felt like they felt the pressure. They both haven't won all year. They've been trying to win. They've been both very hungry to win races. But then you have the best driver, arguably, in the sport, arguably the best driver in the world, Kyle Larson driving up on you with fresher tires and he has been the faster car all race long i just think both of them felt the pressure busher slid up and not even a half lap later you had truex do the exact same thing in a different corner it was just i i, I wouldn't say they choked i would if it was the last lap i would say they choked but either way i think larson would have completed the pass whether he had to get his front his nose dirty or not he might have had to use his use his front bumper on those drivers to get past them if he needed to i think he would have made, completed those passes no matter what either way i wish they were able to put up a little bit more of a fight and i think it was also just really unfortunate to have martin Trix jr run out of gas on the last lap i'm of course unhappy that kyle bush ran out of gas as well but i'm more upset about the chastain incident than that but true x had arguably a top five, top three car today and runs out of gas on the final lap. I'm not even sure where he finished. He passed the start finish line going probably like 0.1 miles per hour. It was just really unfortunate and disappointing to see his race end like that. But let me know your thoughts down below. What did you think about the race at Sonoma Raceway? Are you agreeing with me that you think it was a very entertaining race, but it wasn't what you'd think of when it comes to a classic race, especially the beginning portion of that event. The second half, I think it got a little bit more strate strategic. But give me all your thoughts down below on your thoughts of Sonoma Raceway. But that'll do it for me. Thanks for watching. My name is Kyle, a.k.a. Racing Boy Short, saying peace. <laughs>